Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his good friend, friend of the channel, and somebody who just did the choices exercise, and I was blown away, both by how cheaply he lived and his Mac Daddy life. It's pretty fancy. I like oh, yeah. it. How you doing, Todd? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we go, we go from needing 350 bucks a month to needing 80 grand. That is some life-changing stuff right there, I tell you. I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> that was fun for me. I don't know if it was fun for you, but it's fun for me. Hey, uh, what I want to do here in video number two is I want to talk about getting ready for a recession. Uh, I think, well, first and foremost, recessions happen. Uh, I did some very quick research. Research uh, say recessions are about every 58, let's call it 60 months or five years. They last an average of 17 and a half, call it 18 months. So recessions are like forest fires. They happen time and again. They clear out the underbrush. Uh, companies who don't make money go out. People who are over leveraged get hurt and all that good stuff. I think we have a recession staring us in the face. Uh, we have rising rates. We have war, which traditionally have been two starters. And the third yield inversion is coming. So I think a recession is coming. So given that it's telegraphed, I thought you and I should talk about the things we would do either now or before to get ready. And then more importantly, to take advantage of the recession. So I don't know where you want to start, but let's go wherever you want to go. Yeah, I would just say for anyone who's bought a primary residence, or I say, well, not, not a house you're making money on, which is most people. Um, if you're over leveraged or if you've taken out a HELOC on your home because it's you know skyrocketing in value and you've used that HELOC to go buy a bunch of nonsense, um, just be cautious because if a recession comes, and the value of your home happens to decrease, which won't necessarily happen, but if it does, and you have this HELOC out, all of a sudden you're underwater on the house and the HELOC is spent on, a, you know, I don't know, boats and, and trains, <laughs> whatever people are into, you're, you're gonna be in a tough position. Yeah. So I like to be cautionary and protective of cash. And when you're protective of your cash, when the market actually does go down, then you can go buy stuff for a huge discount. Yeah. I've lived through a couple of recessions. Obviously, I'm a couple of decades older. Uh, I still remember some pretty nasty recessions as a kid, right? Because, right, I, I was, I was old enough to remember the '80s, right? The early '80s when I remember watching one of my earliest memories, and I don't have a lot of them. Was watching TV. I think it was black and white. Probably was black and white. It was only like three channels, but I remember looking at gold shooting up. I remember interest rates at like sixteen percent on savings. And thinking it was normal because I didn't know any different. Um, but I also remember my dad was home for nine months unemployed, right? Which he was a not a happy man. Mm -hmm. uh, that was not fun. Um, but yeah, it um, they're bad, right? Recession. If you're not, if you don't take, I guess what I would tell people, because again, I can see it coming. And again, people, some people aren't ready, right? Three percent, three point eight percent unemployment, wage inflation. 11 million job openings and only 6 million. Under Dude, this can change in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. It can change in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, what I would tell everybody first is audit all your day job income, yours, your significant others. Just make sure you feel good about that. Because again, the, the whole thing about a recession is even if unemployment doubles or heaven forbid triples, you say unemployment goes to 10%. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of people impacted. But that's still 90% of people working, mm -hmm. right? Um, so what I would tell you to do is, is this is not the time, like in our world, right? You and I sold stuff. I would not want to be selling a brand new product today because I've done layoffs before. And the first thing to go is all these net new products that aren't generating revenue. They're just cost centers. Mm -hmm. You would, you wouldn't want to do that. Although as a bull market starts, I'd love selling new products because you have low quotas and this, that, the other, not the thing to do today. So the first thing I'd tell you is take a minute, make sure you're, you're secure. Is that, does that make sense? Absolutely. And I think, unfortunately, you know, we had sort of the great resignation where people were quitting their jobs and droves. And so some lower paying jobs had to boost up their pay, which is the market just telling them what they need. But mm -hmm. a lot of these folks who are now making 22 bucks an hour at McDonald's, if a recession comes, they're going to be the first to go. Yeah. Because if people stop going to McDonald's as much because you don't have as you know as much free cash flow, yep. man, all those people are going to lose their jobs. Yeah, so certainly a, a decent per percentage. The other thing I would tell you to do, again, given this great resignation, is right now, right now, like in the next ninety days, 
Uh, again, if I was younger, probably if I didn't have any kids, certainly if I didn't have any kids, I might look to make a job change and I'd go to a competitor. Because mm -hmm. again, the best your employer can do, and I say this with 30 years of experience hiring and, and promotions and all of that, best I could do is three to 5%. If I hire someone for a competitor, I guarantee you they're getting 20%. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if you're going to make the move, do it now before we get into the teeth of this. Because again, um, movement will cease to exist um, when you go there. And also realize if you go somewhere and a recession happens, you're the newbie. So play that risk, right? You, mm -hmm. don't, have into, you don't have knowledge yet. So really get yourself entrenched fast if you're going to a, a new shop. Mm-hmm. The second thing I got to tell folks, and again, it's it, you and I clearly believe this, but if you have any variable rate debt, credit cards, HELOCs, anything that is an adjustable rate mortgage, if you're in a commercial property and you got a term coming up, woo, be careful. Um, that's again, on my channel, I talked about what we've done. We've, we've got everything on 30 year money, including my apartments, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, get out of variable rate debt, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Yeah. I, just be careful with debt. Um, variable rate debt. Yeah. You, you want to, if you can pay that stuff off, um, you don't want to have any open credit cards or anything. Cause that that's, what's going to come up and bite you because if you're, if you're fulfilling a lifestyle with your income that might be inflated because right now um, there is a little bit of wage inflation, yeah. Um, but your debt's still going to be there if you lose that source of income. So be very careful. Um, yeah, you just you just want to be cautious. Uh, it's it's just sort of that thing where, when the when they're printing money like crazy, and when you know, and when stuff has gotten more expensive, and people are out crazy buying, and they're putting it on credit cards or getting personal loans or whatever, they're fulfilling this lifestyle. But the crash is going to come, and when it does, the people who are going to be in a world of hurt are the people with bad debt on a bunch of stuff that doesn't produce any income or doesn't go up in value. Yeah, the other one, the next one I want to talk about is what got Dave Ramsey. I don't know if people can see that as a Dave. Oh, I guess you can't read it. But anyways, I'll read it. This is from, I don't know, the Dave Ramsey. He was answering questions. I think this is on Instagram. It might have been Twitter. But if somebody asked Dave Ramsey, thoughts on Burr, buy, uh, repair, rent, refi, repeat. I'm going to read it word for word. It's, it's a get rich quick scheme. Just a newer way of describing an awful real estate investing plan. It's similar to what I did that drove me to bankruptcy 30 years ago. It's full of risk, full of assumptions that if they don't work out perfectly, will leave you high and dry with a ton of debt that you can't pay back. The reason I brought this up here for this recession is I know people who are using hard money, private money you know, getting on this treadmill of debt, 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 max leverage, max leverage, zero money in the deal. Uh, get off that treadmill right now. Mm -hmm. um, else, I mean, Dave Ramsey had $4 million portfolio with $3 million of debt. He is a freaking millionaire. And he still had to go bankruptcy because the debt structure ate him alive. This is not the time to pile risk on risk, on risk, on risk, on risk, in my opinion. Yeah. And have you seen our callable loans still a thing? Like, because I know that's what really bit Dave Ramsey in the butt. Mm -hmm. Does that happen today? I have, I just never even. Yeah, they are them, co commercial loans. Okay, that's, yeah. that's the problem. And that's why. So residential loans, resi, not. Uh, but short term paper, like people mm -hmm. are people, people executing Burr usually don't have their own money. Mm -hmm. So they're using short term, hard or private. That stuff's not callable, but it has a term. Uh, what is callable and what is going to bite all of these syndicators' ass, mm -hmm. their bridge debt, callable. Their terms, callable. You could listen to Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone talks about the Great Recession almost killed him. It's where he wrote 10X. He, was, he, he had a bank call his loan. He had an apartment building, never missed a payment, had, still was making money. The bank called his loan because he was in technical default. The bank was in trouble. The bank needed cash. So the bank called loans from people they thought could pay. They didn't call loans from people they didn't think could pay. Think about that. That's why I spent a year getting out and getting all of my apartments and my two offices 
into 30 year fixed rate money. I mm -hmm. went to a non QM lender, Velocity Mortgage, who, who I talk to every Friday, and they can't call my loans. Beautiful. Most of you, man, if you're an LP, limited partner in syndication, doing a value add today with a year of bridge debt, you are, you are gambling worse than casino. Not good. So yeah, call them alone. commercial, not resi. Uh, so uh, then, then the last thing I do want to close on a high note, uh, I want people to realize once you protect yourself, once you kind of de-risk <clears throat> the, the 18 months, because as I said earlier, they only last 18 months. As we turn out of this, there will be amazing opportunities that you could buy. You could buy toys at a discount because people will liquidate toys. But what you should be doing as you're building, figuring out a way to get creative, do a lot of deals. Uh, I mean, I did two or three apartment buildings, zero down, just escrowed some repair money. It is amazing what you could do by doing the work, creating relationships, networking, solving problems. Uh, recessions are awesome, uh, but you got to survive them. So. I want people to end yeah. on that. Yeah, no, um, it, it could be a wonderful thing. I mean, that's how a lot of these guys became wealthy. Robert Kiyosaki, he went out and he bought a ton Sam of Zell. money. Sam right. Zell. Yeah. And even, even Dave Ramsey, who we spoke about earlier, I think when, I don't know if it was the 2008, it was probably way earlier than that, but when there was a recession as they, you know, they happen on a cycle. Mm -hmm. exactly. Every five years, buy. apparently. Sorry? Every five years, every 58 and a half months. Right. Yeah. So, so Dave Ramsey was, was basically able to buy $200 million worth of real estate for like 15 million bucks. Cool. That's, that's how he got crazy wealthy. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. If you know what you're doing, you're cautious and you protect yourself. And too many people, I think, don't understand the protection side is the most important thing. And exactly. You got to survive to thrive. Yes. Yes, because there are going to be people who make millions, if not billions, because of the recession. And yeah, there are going to be people who get eaten alive. Yeah, there's no question that you and I will come out of the recession stronger. Because again, oh, yeah. again, recessions, you can see them coming. Mm -hmm. You can prepare for them. And what I would tell, again, the last year has been the hardest time ever to buy out of the MLS. Hardest. I suspect that the next year to 18 months, not so hard. Mm -hmm. So again, do the work, get a buy box, daily discipline, understand average, just do everything that we talk about how to get uh, started one rental at a time link below. It's going to be fun, but you got to do the work. You got to get ready. You got to, you got to make sure you so survive so you can thrive. I just thought of that. So I wanted to say it again. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, I like it. It rhymes. It's good. It's, it sounds cool. There you go. Yeah. All right, how can people find you? Cause uh, you're going to help people. Yeah. If you guys want to connect with me, the best way to do that is through Instagram at Todd J Baldwin. And I also post a lot of content pretty much every day on YouTube. And that's just my name, Todd Baldwin. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it.